Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to the dev channel, Max Codes. In this video, I just wanna take a look at the Spotify API, just to kind of give some of you and myself an understanding of kind of what we could possibly do with this API. Now, I've messed around with the Apple Music API before, but I haven't really touched the Spotify API. So again, I'm really interested in what we could potentially do with this. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. All right, now before we get started, I just wanna let you know that I'm gonna be integrating the Spotify API into my own website so I can share with you my playlist. Now, that's not really too much information right now, but I just wanted to let you know of that. Hold up, before we get started, drop a like, leave a subscribe, or I don't know if I said that right, but you're gonna to wanna to subscribe. All right, let's go ahead and get started. All right, what's up guys? Uh, welcome back to this video here. Let's go ahead and just Google Spotify API, okay? Because whenever I'm kind of looking for an API for a service I'm interested in, such as the Amazon Fire Stick, which I recently got a TV for, I'll just kind of just like Google it, right? I'll say like Fire Stick API, right? Because I noticed that there's some apps on the App Store, the iOS App Store, in which other developers have made apps or said features, right? So what we're doing here is we're just gonna Google Spotify API and see, oh, okay, they have an API. So I just wanted to let you guys know that because if you're trying to learn how to code and trying to use features like this, then that's just one thing to keep in mind is that generally a lot of services have open APIs for developers. You might know of Philips Hue. I know they have an API, but I know they're deprecating it. So all I'm saying here is that there's a lot of things you can do with the current state of technology and programming. And I wanted to provide that value to you to let you know how to find that. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump into the web API here. Okay, so I'm at this URL right here. I've zoomed in a bit. Now, one thing I just wanna look at before we really jump into this, well, I guess we've jumped into it already, but one thing I really wanna look at in this video is the authorization because typically with, or always with APIs like this, you're gonna to need to follow some strict authorization flow, right? Let's scroll to the bottom because I believe it's down here. Uh, you'll see we have rate limiting. Funny story, I actually uh, wrote a Tinder bot for Tinder, obviously, and it would just swipe right like as many times as possible on the website and I surpassed the rate limiting and it uh, kind of banned me from their site because I performed way too many requests, right? So just kind of a funny story. I'll probably make a video on how to write that that uh bot <laughs> anyway let's scroll down to the bottom because you'll see we have authorization at the bottom here okay let's see authors authentication that's what i meant okay which is authorization almost so all requests of the web api require authentication this is achieved by sending valid oauth access token to the request header for more information about these authentication methods see the web api authorization guide Note, to access personal user information, you need an access to token that is generated only after the user permits the access. So what this means right here is that the only way you can access another user's data, personal information at least, because they might have public playlists, but to access any personal information, say, to, say if you wrote an app where they could basically use your version of Spotify, I guess, right? Where you have their playlists load up with their Apple Music playlists or something. You're gonna need them to provide their own credentials, right? It's like login with Google or something. Well, similar, but a little bit different. Okay, the thing with login with Google is that it really provides the application with your details to use in the application, whereas something like this is more so to use personal information in the app to display to the user, okay? Not much on that, but if you click here, you can really get a little bit more information on authentication and authorization. This is really where you want to start when developing with new platforms like Spotify for developers or Philips Hue for developers. Okay, you just want to get authorized first. Basically, this will allow you this will allow you to use information from Spotify, right? Now, this is kind of a weird flow. I've noticed it's a little bit complicated, you see here. And uh, I'm not gonna go through that in this video because that's more of like a code tutorial. I might upload a course or a video on that. I'll let you all know in the newsletter on my website, but for now, I'm gonna ignore that. Okay, what I'm really interested in taking a look at though is up here in the docs, I kind of want to look at the uh, the endpoints, right? So let's go to, I want to click on iOS real quick, just see what they have here. I didn't know they had an iOS SDK. Wow, that's incredible, right? 
I thought it was just going to be like URLs and you, you kind of have to write your own code for this, but it looks like they have an SDK for it, which is really interesting. But let's not look at that, even though this is mainly an iOS channel. I kind of want to make this a web channel too, kind of just development overall. But let's take a look at uh, the APIs, right? Maybe we can search it up here or the endpoints. I like that big font, it looks nice. Web API reference, let's take a look at that. API endpoint reference albums. Okay, see, you can get albums by hitting this endpoint. Let's click on that. Now that's really interesting because let me pull up my Spotify real quick. You'll see I have um, a bunch of Spotify playlists here that are public for you all to check out if you want. You can, uh, well, this is my other account, so I won't really talk about this right now because I don't, if you, this is my other account, but if you search max codes on Spotify, don't follow that. But if you go down to people, I have my podcast on here and then profiles, four followers there. This is mine. You can check out my playlists if you want. Anyway, what I'm getting here is that this is a playlist and say I want to display this on my website so that you could quickly just go onto my website and like go to playlists or something and view my playlist, right? What I would do is I would integrate and then follow my playlists or something. I would integrate this API method or endpoint to retrieve my album and then display that information in my app to allow you to follow it. So that's kind of what I'm getting at here is that this API is pretty powerful. I could integrate Spotify basically directly into my own web apps or iOS apps, 100% custom, which is really freaking dope. And uh, I think that y'all should be aware of that because it's pretty powerful and it's a pretty good entrance into the uh, the personal branding area, right? Like if you get people to follow your playlists and stuff, that's just gonna further your presence on the internet, which is a pretty powerful thing in today's kind of society, global society, let's say, internet society. But yeah, you can get artist information, pretty self-explanatory stuff. Let's look at player though. I don't know really what that is. The endpoints are in beta. We encourage you to build with them. Oh, this is interesting. So this is like, this is like, let me open up uh, Spotify real quick. You'll see down here. Oh, it's not displaying my devices. Okay, so I have a Lumetric. I didn't know you could freaking play music through that, but essentially my iPhone could pop up here. My Sono speaker could pop up here. My Beats Pro could pop up here. My Mac, my MacBook, my other devices, right? And you can play through your phone, through the computer. You could play from your phone through the computer or through the phone. <laughs> I can't, I, I think you get what I'm saying. Essentially, you can have different players. Okay, that's what this is. That's kind of interesting. I didn't know you could get those informations. This looks like a really fleshed out API that has a lot of features. Some of it's in beta, it looks like, but... Yeah, so here's another thing that's really interesting. If I just wanted to have you go to my website and like follow my playlists, which provides value to you because code music is dope, what I would do is I would integrate something like this endpoint to display my profile instead of saying, hey, go on Spotify and search up my prof profile because that's kind of a hassle, right? It'd be so much easier to just say, hey, go to my website and click on Spotify playlists or playlists, right? And then have them all kind of appear. So that's kind of like a use case for the Spotify API. Now, that's really kind of all I wanted to cover in this video. I just wanted to kind of take a look at some of the endpoints, really just throw something up really quick. No really flow at all, just kind of off the top of my head. But yeah, glad you watched the video. If you want to know more about the Spotify API, drop a comment and I'll take a look at some of the specific features here and get back with you, right? And I really hope to develop some more tutorials or to develop tutorials on the Spotify API and provide that value to you. So go ahead and leave a like and subscribe and uh, I'll see you in uh, the next video I post. Catch you later, guys.